So how does this take place? NHK is conducting an experiment with a group of researchers. The team will track particles in the air using laser beams and a high sensitivity camera. This technology allows us to detect droplets as small as 0.1 micrometers wide. The experiment starts. First, sneezing. <coughs> we can see a large droplet, about one millimeter in diameter. It quickly falls. But let's look through the high sensitivity camera. We can see small particles that seem to glitter floating through the air. These particles are all smaller than 10 micrometers or one one hundredth of a millimeter in diameter. Let's take a look from a different angle. They're small and light. You can see them drifting through the air. These are micro droplets. We're learning that sneezing isn't the only source of these droplets. We ran the same experiment on a close range conversation. People generate a lot of micro droplets when they talk loudly. The droplets between these two stay where they are. They don't drift away. It's not yet known what volume of micro droplets leads to infection. But Tatada says we can't rule out the possibility that micro droplets have spread the virus to some extent. The risk of infection through micro droplets becomes even greater in a closed space with poor ventilation. This lab is simulating the movement of micro droplets in an airtight room. About 10 people in an enclosed space the size of a classroom. <coughs> a person coughs once and spreads about 100,000 droplets. Large droplets are shown in blue and green. Most of these fall to the ground within one minute. But the micro droplets shown in red continue to drift. <coughs> this simulation uses only micro droplets. Five minutes later, 10 minutes later, Twenty minutes later, the micro droplets are still floating in place. But there is a way to prevent this stagnation of micro droplets. Opening windows and increasing air circulation is believed to be effective. When you open a window,
micro droplets are quickly swept away. They're very small and light, so any airflow will get rid of them. できればですね、2箇所開けて風の流れを作ってあげるということが大事、それが1時間に1回でもいいから、そういうようなことをやることによって、感染のリスクというのはかなり下げることができるようになるんじゃないかなというふうに思います。